Hey guys, welcome to the channel. So I wanted to share with you some insights that we've learned in the business of installing equipment like this into new construction homes. So if you guys are building a home, you're thinking about building a home, uh, maybe you built one in the past and put a bunch of ethernet in it, you don't know what to do with it. Guys, this, listen up, this channel's kind of built for you guys. So what I've learned in doing this for a while is that a lot of new construction homes, when people are building, they focus on the pretty stuff. You know, flooring, landscaping, are we putting in a pool? What color are we gonna do the walls? Types of flooring we're putting in. All the stuff that people are gonna see. And that stuff is very, very important. However, a lot of times we find that a very, very important piece gets missed. And that is putting in some form of infrastructure in your home so you can actually have a nice network. Guys, everything is done online nowadays. I mean, between, after COVID with people working from home, online gaming, streaming is becoming more the norm for TV watching, all that's done through your internet. And you really want a nice infrastructure in your home to be able to support that. And sure, Wi-Fi is great. If you guys wanna just do Wi-Fi and go down to Best Buy and pick up something, you don't have to watch the rest of this video. We are not talking to you guys. Those systems work just fine. They honestly do, they, they work okay. But this is for something that we feel is a little bit better. A, it's nicer equipment, and B, we're talking about physical cabling in your home that can help make sure that Xbox doesn't skip a beat, make sure that TV doesn't buffer as often. So that's what the channel is gonna be about. So it's based on new construction homes. I've built this behind me as sort of a lab environment to kind of show you some of the principles we're talking about. And in a minute, I'll introduce the equipment that's behind me. But it's built to kind of show you some of the exposed wiring, some of the tubing that we're gonna talk about. So if you are building a home, maybe you're doing it yourself. This is really gonna be geared towards a do-it-yourselfer, or maybe you just are going to um, tell somebody where you want things. Guys, planning things ahead of time when you have exposed beams is the best time to do this. So I'm gonna introduce you to the equipment behind me that we're gonna use as the starting point for our lab, and then we'll get to work on future videos based off your comments. So I encourage you, please comment in this video below. The videos will kind of take directions based on things you wanna see. Um, and, and my hope is that we can take kind of a deep dive in some of those things and even be able to show you what I'm talking about with this area in here um, to help you guys out with your projects. So let's get going. Okay guys, let's get to what's here. So we're gonna keep this pretty high level. Keep in mind, future videos are gonna dive into this a little bit in more detail. Um, the first thing I wanna point out is this is the network shelf version. We are also gonna tear this out and do a rack version where I install the equipment in a rack. Personally, I like racks a little bit better. However, your circumstance might not allow it to fit in your home. Maybe your stuff is in a closet and then you're sharing space with other stuff and there's just no room to put a rack. Completely understand that. A network shelf is the next best thing. And it still allows you to run your cable nice and neat, so it's not an eyesore. Guys, I think in general, a lot of people, when they think about this stuff, they're like, ugh, the hornet's nest of just cables going everywhere. If you plan it right, it doesn't have to be that way. Stuff can look nice and be laid out in a nice way that gives it functionality. And we're gonna talk about ways that you can do that in your home during the build process so you don't have to you know, look at this ugly nest of cables. All right, so real quick, let's just go over what's here. Down here at the bottom, we have a small UPS. This is a battery backup system that basically just protects your equipment in the case of a power outage. We're here in the Midwest. We get thunderstorms, which may trip the power, you know, a couple times during the storm. Um, that's really hard on equipment when it shuts down and comes back up and shuts down and comes back up. Plus it helps protect from like power surges and brownouts and things like that kind of um, doesn't exactly give you full clean power, but it helps provide better power to your equipment. And then if you lose power to the home, actually your equipment stays running. It's not gonna run it forever. It's really just a cheap, affordable way to kind of give you a little bit of extra protection. Next, we're gonna talk about our router. This is the Ubiquiti UDM Pro. This channel is gonna focus on Ubiquiti and I can already hear the groaning. Um, there's a lot of people who don't like Ubiquiti. I love it personally. And that's what we're gonna use in our lab. If you guys don't like Ubiquity, that's fine. A lot of the principles we're talking about, you can use with other equipment like Ruckus or Cisco, Meraki Goes or Netgear. You know, 
thing, all those types of equipment use Cat6 cabling or whatever. So the fundamentals will be there for whatever kind of network you're going to be using. However, I like Ubiquiti. I think from a home network standpoint, uh, this is high-end equipment that doesn't cost a lot. And again, we'll get into pricing. But um, this router here is the Ubiquiti UDM Pro. It's part of their Dream Machine line. Um, it is rack mountable, even though we have it just sitting on a shelf right here. This box does a lot of things. Um, one, it's going to be our router slash firewall. So you can create rules and VLANs and all sorts of cool stuff like that. Um, it actually has a switch built into it. So chances are, if you only have a few cables, maybe you don't need a switch. You can just use the built-in switch. That's nice. You can connect both fiber and copper to it. So if your internet provider is, gives you a fiber handoff, you can plug fiber right into your router. That's kind of a cool deal. You can see it's got a bay right here. This actually can hook up security cameras, okay? And be your camera recorder right here built locally. Um, you can put a hard drive in here and you record your security cameras to it. Um, it does some other things too, which we probably won't venture into too deep because um, they don't really apply to the home network. This is a business grade switch, so it does a lot of business functionality like door access and voice over IP, phone systems and things like that. But from a home standpoint, home security and routing does very well. We're gonna, we're gonna show you guys around that a little bit. Above that, we have a 16 port PoE switch. Again, the only thing this switch is really running is our, our access point, which I haven't uh, shown you yet. You probably can't see it, but we're gonna talk about switches in general. Um, you know, how to size your switch, um, PoE, the power inputs again. So as you're kind of putting all this together, you can come up with a very good plan and have some good equipment in here. So that is the switch um, that basically where all our cables that go throughout the house, which again, these are just sitting here, but the cables that go all throughout the house would plug into to give them network connectivity. All right, over here, we have our T-Mobile 5G home internet service. Um, We'll talk about this a little bit. I have Verizon 5G home internet at my house. Um, there's a lot of people that, you know, again, don't like those type of services, but we like to just educate people and let them know other stuff exists. Um, when, when we built our house five years ago, the only option we had was Cox Fiber. Cox Fiber was great, but it was expensive. So when you factored in um, having to buy extra data and things like that, I was paying $159 a month for 500 meg of speed. Um, and that's a lot. That's a lot. I get 300 mega speed with my Verizon 5G and I pay 225 bucks a month. So huge price savings. <laughs> and so we'll dive into that a little bit. But this is going to be providing internet for our equipment here in our lab area. Next, we have our smart power strip. Um, it's kind of a gimmicky thing that uh, Ubiquiti has, but I wanted to show it to you guys. I like them just from the standpoint of the spacing of the outlets is kind of nice. It's got some USB-C in here. So if you guys have Raspberry Pis, you can actually power them right off there. Um, kind of the cool thing it does is it allows you to identify which port your modem is plugged into. And in the event that your network loses connectivity to the internet, it will actually automatically power cycle your modem for you in an effort to heal your, ne heal your network and bring it back up on its own, which is kind of a cool little function. Um, it is connected to Wi-Fi, so it gives you the ability to remotely power cycle devices and things like that, as long as it's online. Um, here in the background, you'll see some exposed tubing, exposed drywall. I'm going to talk about cable running and just some things you can do to make things look nice and neat for you. So that's kind of why things are exposed like they are. We're going to talk about wiring behind TVs. We'll probably put a box in here and kind of talk about some of that so you guys can do some planning. Again, this channel is built to help you with your project, whether you're pulling the cable yourself or you are directing someone to do it. This will give you some insight on where you want things um, so you can give some direction, all right? Up above, you have a ceiling mounted access point also from Ubiquiti. This is the U6LR. It's a Wi-Fi 6 access point. I actually have four of them in my house. This one is dedicated just to this lab environment. Um, and we'll talk about how to program it. All the programming is done in the, in the USG that, we, uh, that I showed you earlier, the router, but um, which is also your controller. So a, a Wi-Fi access point is basically a device that, ha it's, it's kind of a dumb device. It just sits there and says, all right, tell me what to do. So because the controller is built into your uh, Unified Dream Machine Pro, 
you actually do all the programming for the access point in that, and then it just sends commands to the access points and says, do this. And so the thing I like about these is one, uh, easy to install, and three, by being, being in the center or uh, being able to be ceiling mounted, you can put them anywhere in your house and they just shoot Wi-Fi out in all directions. Um, they don't have to be in a corner. They don't have to be near a power outlet like the stuff you get at Best Buy. So we're going to talk about some of the pros and cons, how to install them. Um, as you can see on that one, we just have a single gang box that's installed in the ceiling that this mounts right to. And it makes it very easy and clean. And even if you didn't want to use Wi-Fi in your ceiling, we encourage you to still run the cables. Um, you can always put a blank on it and just have it there for the future. You might change your mind down the road. Uh, it's really hard to do it after the fact, and that's why we're doing these videos. So there's also gonna be some other flavors of Wi-Fi that we're gonna talk about too, like an in-wall system that work really well in offices, and I'll give you some examples of that. So this is kind of just the starting point. Guys, I encourage you to leave comments. Tell me what you wanna learn about. We'll start doing videos you know, that kind of takes um, direction based off your comments. Um, I did a couple TikTok videos uh, that's more shorter form content and they blew up. People want to know more about this stuff. And so that's why we're making this channel. That's why it exists. Um, we're going to give you some help along the way in hopes to help you with your project. So I wanted to just introduce you to this. We're going to talk about some principles. We're going to talk about future proofing your home. There's a lot of people that think, oh, why would I install all this cabling when it's just going to be obsolete in a few years? We understand that. Potentially, there's always the opportunity for that to happen. I don't have a crystal ball any more than the next guy. Um, Wi-Fi has come a long way, but at the end of the day, I just believe in having a cable. So we'll talk about some things you can do in your home to future-proof it, to be able to get your internet provider to this location um, in your home. We're gonna talk about that. So you guys can plan at the beginning of your process and hopefully when it all comes together and drywall goes up and you can't get to this stuff anymore, you're ready to go. So that's what we're going to be focused on. I really appreciate you guys tuning in. I'm excited to do this. I'm excited to hear from you. Um, so we'll keep it going. We'll end this here in hopes to hear from you guys. And I will see you very, very soon. Thank you.